Have you ever really stopped to think about the phrase television programming? Like, it's so strange when you actually think about it. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we use these words all the time. But we're taking a deep dive today into this whole idea of language as spellcraft. Okay. So how the words around us, especially in media, you know, maybe they have more power than we realize. It's um, It really is fascinating how much of the language we use to talk about media is actually rooted in these really, really old ideas about magic and spellcasting. Right. Like even just the word broadcasting. Yeah. It's like we're casting a net <laughs> right, exactly. to try and capture the attention of viewers. Yeah. And it sounds, I don't know, almost sinister when you put it that way. It does, doesn't it? And when you start to think about the the word caster, like historically what a caster is, mm. a caster is someone who throws something. Okay. So a broadcaster is casting information and ideas and even emotions, you know? At an audience, yeah. At a passive audience. Wow. That's uh, that's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, it's like we're unknowingly casting spells with our words every day. In a way, yeah. It reminds me of this one article that we read about the word cast and how it connects to both entertainment and to magic. Absolutely, like cast has that dual meaning, right? Hmm. You know, in entertainment, a cast is that group of actors chosen to play very specific roles yeah. in a performance. Right. And the goal of any performance, any performance, is to evoke some kind of response from an audience. Wow. I never thought about it that way. It's like <laughs> actors are casting a spell on the audience with their performances. It's true. Blowing my mind. Well, think about it. Like, at its core, right, a spell is really just about using words and rituals to influence the world around you right to bring about a desired outcome mm. isn't that what all media is trying to do really yeah i guess so trying to influence our thoughts and our behaviors yeah through these carefully crafted narratives okay yeah i mean but it's not just the performance itself it's also the language that we use right oh absolutely like we say someone spelled a word correctly right but we're really talking about just arranging letters mm-hmm. in a specific sequence to create meaning. Exactly. Yeah. Spelling is about shaping reality, right? Mm-hmm. It's shaping reality through language. Mm-hmm. And just like with, you know, those magical spells, the words that we choose, the way we arrange them, like they hold a very specific power. Right. I mean, it's no coincidence, right? Yeah. That the act of forming words and the practice of magic both use that word spell. Spell. So if you think about it like that, then grammar Right? Yeah, yeah. The rules of language. Right. It could kind of be seen as a spell book in a way, right? You could absolutely say that. Yeah. There's actually, you know, people have speculated that the word grammar itself might even come from the word grimoire. Oh, wow. Which means a book of spells. Wow. You know, and when you think about that, like understanding grammar, it's really like understanding those rules of magic, right? Mm. Hmm. Yeah. It lets us communicate more effectively. Right. And create a desired impact. So grammar can actually make you like a more powerful communicator. Absolutely. That's a game changer. So if grammar is like having this whole spell book, then, I mean, media must be full of like powerful incantations then, right? Right. Especially something like television, which is so image driven. It's not just the words. It's the whole like package deal, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Television doesn't just present content, you Mm -hmm. know, it really carefully arranges sound and images, right? Yeah. To try to evoke certain specific responses Mm. in us, in the viewer. Right. Like think about just even the structure of your typical TV show, Mm. the way that they repeat certain phrases over and over, the emotional cues that they give you from the music or even the lighting. Yeah. It's all very deliberately chosen. It's very intentional. Oh, absolutely. And even like I always think about laugh tracks, you know? Oh, yeah. Like They literally tell you when to laugh. I always found that so bizarre. It's a form of manipulation, even though it's subtle, right? Right. Right. But it's not just sitcoms or anything. Right. It's news programs and documentaries, even commercials, you know? Oh, yeah. They all use these techniques to shape our perception of reality. So basically, when we say, you know, television programming, we're not just talking about, like, the schedule of shows that are going to be on, right? Right. We're talking about the potential for our minds to be... Well, programmed yes. by what we watch. That is the implication. And it's part of the reason why media literacy is just so important. Right. Particularly now, I think, when we're just bombarded with it constantly. Right. 
and from so many different sources. Exactly. You know, it's interesting because the source material that we're looking at today actually mentions that both of the authors decided to stop watching television altogether. Mm. Like, do they think that it's inherently bad? Not necessarily. I mean, they talk about it more as just a conscious choice. Right. You know, to disconnect a little bit from yeah. that constant stream of influence. Right. To try to create space for more independent thought. They even call it unplugging from the matrix, right. which I kind of love. Yeah. You know, it's like this chance to kind of break free from those carefully constructed narratives and to kind of question things for yourself. Totally. And I can see that. I know, like, I've definitely gotten sucked into those endless scroll holes on social media before where it's what like the, yeah. you can feel your brain turning to mush. Totally. A hundred percent. And you know, it's not about demonizing television or any form of media, right. but it is about recognizing that it has the potential to impact, you know, yeah. our thoughts and our behaviors. Yeah. So we have to kind of make a choice. We have to consciously choose right. about how much we allow those external forces to kind of influence us. So if understanding these linguistic spells is like the first step, is there a way to counteract them? Sure. Like, can we cast our own spells, so to speak? Absolutely. Once you kind of understand the power of language, right, mm. you can really start to use it more intentionally Yeah. to shape your own reality. It's kind of empowering when you think about it. Yeah. Like, instead of just being bombarded by, you know, everyone else's messages all the time. Right. We can actually take control and kind of shape our own realities. Absolutely. With the language that we use. It is about tapping into that innate power we have. We're all storytellers, right? Right. Like, at our core. Hmm. Because ultimately, you know, we're always telling ourselves stories. Yeah. Yeah about who we are, what we want, what we think is possible, right. you know? It's like we all have this inner screenwriter in our heads who's constantly working. Exactly. On the narrative of our lives, yeah. even when we don't realize it. Precisely. And it's when you become aware of that inner screenwriter that things start to change, you know? Yeah. It's when you can start making those conscious choices about what stories you're telling yourself. Right. And the words that you use to tell them. That's where the real transformation happens. So... You know, for our listeners who are out there right now, maybe driving to work or making dinner, whatever they're doing. Yeah. What's like the key takeaway from all of this? What's yeah. the one thing you want them to remember about language as spellcraft? You know, I think it's actually very simple. Yeah. It's just that words have power. They have power to shape our thoughts, our beliefs, and ultimately our lived experiences. Right. You know? And once we can understand that, I think we can really begin to use language in a more conscious way more yeah. intentionally yeah. to create the reality we want so it's about awareness and intention yeah and maybe a little bit of magic a little bit of magic i like that well this deep dive has been incredible i feel like i've learned so much good good you know i was really my eyes are open to just how much language really really matters absolutely you know? yeah it's something i never really thought about before yeah but like next time i'm you know even if i'm just scrolling through social media right right or even just chatting with friends yeah I'm going to be, I think, way more mindful of the words that I choose. That's great. That's the first step. You know, just pay attention. Pay yeah. attention to how you feel when you hear certain words or certain phrases. Yeah. Notice how other people are using language, you know, to try to persuade you or influence you. Right. The more aware you become, I swear, it's like you'll start to see these spells everywhere. It's like learning to see the matrix. You know? Exactly. Well, on that note. Uh, thank you so much for this conversation. This has been uh, incredible. I know I've learned a lot, and I hope our listeners have too. It's been my pleasure. And remember, the power is within. That is a wrap on today's Deep Dive. Until next time.